students in today's session we'll be discussing an important topic of diabetes mellitus india is one of the leading countries in terms of the cases of diabetes and diabetes is a very very common non communicable disease that we encounter in daily practice for your exams you'll have to know about the theory of diabetes mellitus and also in your practicals there will be a semi long case that's going to be there for diabetes so in this first session the learning objectives would be at the end of the session the student must be able to define diabetes mellitus the student should be able to classify diabetes the student should be able to list the differences between type 1 type 2 and other types of diabetes discuss briefly the etiopathogenesis of diabetes and list the diagnostic criteria for diabetes mellitus let's begin this session with a case scenario so here we have a 32 year old female who comes to the physician with complaints of polyuria for the past 4 weeks on further assessment uh, she reveals that upcoming appointment to her optometrist revealed blurred vision so she had polyuria and then she had blurring of vision when you examine her her bmi is 23.6 and she has strong family history of diabetes from the father's side and admits to have a sedentary lifestyle that she has a random blood sugar that you do reveals it is 257 mg per deciliter so based on this case so this patient has symptom suggestive of diabetes mellitus as well as there is a high blood sugar so this patient requires evaluation to make the diagnosis whether it's truly a diabetes mellitus or not so the investigation that we proceeded along with is the hba1c or the glycosylated hemoglobin that was 8.5% so normally it's around 6.4 and below is normal so 8.5 is elevated so this patient is definitely a diabetic a fasting blood sugar is 147 the two hour postprandial blood sugar is 240 mg per deciliter the triglycerides are 152 and the ldl is 97 so the question that's going to be asked to you is how will you manage this case so you know this patient is having diabetes so it's a young patient who is coming with diabetes the patient is obese so what type of diabetes is it we have to assess is there any complications and then we have to plan the management so that is what we are going to discuss in this session so the definition of diabetes mellitus is a multi system disease related to abnormal insulin production or impaired utilization of insulin or impaired utilization of insulin or they can be both so there could be a diminished production or there should be an impaired utilization so you could have type 1 where the insulin production is getting affected and type 2 diabetes mellitus where it's the peripheral resistance to insulin that's what is causing the manifestation it's one of the leading causes of heart disease stroke adult blindness and non traumatic lower limb amputations that you see so the new definition of diabetes mellitus is is a metabolic com vascular disease so please remember it's not only a metabolic disease it has a significant vascular component that we have to do where there are multiple etiologies and the basic problem is the chronic hyperglycemia which results in disturbances of the carbohydrate fat and protein metabolism so again remember it's not just the carbohydrate it is all the metabolism that gets affected the fat and the protein metabolism also and because the basic problem is either the insulin secretion or the insulin action or both so the problem is either in the secretion or in the action or both and that results in microangiopathy and macroangiopathy the small blood vessels can get involved and the large blood vessels can get involved and the patients can have both metabolic and vascular compromise so this is what diabetes is India and China have the largest number of diabetic population so we have 109 million and 69.2 million in India with the prevalence of southeast asia second only to western pacific so eventually maybe in another 5 to 10 years india would be the diabetes capital of the world the beta cell dysfunction may play an important role in the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes population especially when there is a low bmi so normally what we see is obesity is associated with the insulin resistance but what we consider is the asian indian phenotype where 
you have a thin or a lean diabetic lean diabetic but they have insulin resistance so that's the specific peculiarity that we see in southeast asia so the basic problem that we have is at the islet cell langerhans so you have the beta cells that's there which secrete the insulin the normal insulin is produced by the beta cells that is there in the islets of langerhans and it facilitates to maintain the normal glucose between the normal range 3.9 to 6.7 millimoles per liter so when you see a normal insulin secretion so you have a basal secretion that you can see here that's the basal secretion that's going on there that's called as a basal insulin but whenever there is a feed that's there either the breakfast or the lunch or the dinner or any feed there is a surge of insulin that take care of the hyperglycemia that happens so this is how the insulin regulates in the body the normal insulin metabolism it promotes the glucose transport from the blood stream across the cell membrane into the cytoplasm of the cell analogs to a key or that unlocks the cell door to allow the glucose in so it's very important that insulin without insulin the glucose cannot enter the cell and the metabolism cannot progress so it is the key that unlocks the entire metabolism so increase insulin after a meal stimulates the storage of glucose as glycogen inhibits gluconeogenesis enhances fat deposition in the adipose tissue and also increases protein synthesis this is the normal metabolism of insulin also in a fasting state the counter regulatory hormones like the especially the glucagon is the one which is stimulated and that releases glucose from glycogenolysis from the liver so glucagon is the most important hormone that is required when glucose is unavailable during a fasting state there is lipolysis there is proteolysis and from these there is a release of uh, glucose that would happen so whenever you have a decreased insulin there is a decreased utilization of glucose and secondary to that there is increased glycogenolysis so when the glycogen is broken down there is increased sugar in the body as well as it goes into the urine and that produces osmotic diuresis so that's why the patient has polyuria and whenever there is polyuria there is a lot of water as well as the electrolytes that go out of the body so the patient senses the dehydration and that results in polydipsia also there is polyphagia that would come out so basically though there is an insulin there the glucose is not being able to utilize there because of this defects also there is an alteration in the protein metabolism when there is a decreased insulin there is catabolism of protein that happens there is increased gluconeogenesis that is there the amino acids are broken down into protein and that results in hyperglycemia weight loss and fatigue very important that's because of the protein breakdown that happens the fat metabolism lipolysis occurs and because of that there is increased free fatty acids and ketones that is there and that results again into acidosis and weight loss so these are the hallmarks the complications of diabetes are not only related to the carbohydrate metabolism it's related to both the protein as well as the lipid metabolism and the chronic complications of diabetes are basically related to the vascular problems that are associated so coming on to the classification of diabetes mellitus traditionally the classification has been type 1 and type 2 and of late we have many other types of diabetes that have come in so type 1 diabetes is the diabetes where the beta cells are completely destroyed so there is an absolute lack of insulin whereas type 2 diabetes is a progressive insulin secretory defect so it's a problem with insulin resistance so type 2 is basically insulin resistance and type 1 is beta cell destruction we have many other types of diabetes the common ones like gestational diabetes you have syndromic diabetes you have the maturity onset of diabetes of young the latent autoimmune diabetes and drugs producing diabetes and various endocrinopathies which can produce diabetes we'll be discussing that in some time so it could be either insulin deficient there or there could be a insulin resistant so the insulin resistance usually you have the classical type 2 diabetes mellitus which is polygenic so there is a genetic predisposition but then there are other environmental factors also that is playing the insulin deficient diabetes is the type 1 diabetes which could be immune mediated or it could be non immune mediated so the immune mediated type 1 diabetes is called as type 1a and the non immune is called as type 1b so very importantly the immune mediated diabetes when we see it's associated with hladr3 hladr4 and hladr9 
Also, you have the other types of immune mediated, which is something called as a one and a half diabetes, that is the latent autoimmune diabetes of adulthood. And this basically accounts for around 5 to 20 percent of the total diabetes. The non immune, the non immune where the antibodies are not produced, is classically seen in the African population, the fulminant African varieties of non immune type 1 diabetes. Now, the insulin resistant type of diabetes. The monogenic forms, very important is the MODI, that is maturity of answer diabetes of the young. We have the various uh, uh, enzymes that are deficient, etc., which we will be discussing later. So, this becomes the major type of diabetes which you see in early adults. So, the LADA, the MODI and the secondary diabetes that we have and the gestational diabetes mellitus. So, coming on to type 1 diabetes, it was earlier called as insulin dependent diabetes mellitus or juvenile onset. Both the words are not used anymore because type 2 also can be insulin dependent and we have other types of diabetes which could be insulin dependent. It is not juvenile because you can have an onset later in life also. That is why the word juvenile onset has been removed. So, here there is an absolute deficiency or absolute insulin lack in the body and because of that the blood glucose levels will go high and these patients are generally young and thin. So, usually seen in children and young adults, although it can occur at any age, the type 1 diabetes usually accounts to almost 10 percent of the total diabetes that we have and they are insulin dependent. So, it could be autoimmune that is the type 1 A that is the type 1 B is basically genetic and environmental factors which blow. So, the autoimmune damage starts year before the disease is clinically evident. So, the immune process would start much much earlier and there is an inflammation of the insulin producing cells that is there the beta cells what we call it as an insulitis and they get infiltrated with the cells and then finally there is a damage and fibrosis that happens and because of that there is complete insulin lack. So, there is a genetic predisposition the HLA as we have discussed the DR3, DR4 and DR9 and you could have non-HLA uh, HLA gene polymorphisms with a risk factor that is development when there is a stimulus that could be secondary to viral infections like mumps, rubella, coxsackie and because of that various cells can get stimulated, various systems can get stimulated. So, there could be a failure of self tolerance that is autoimmunity, T helper cell can get stimulated, the cytokines like interferon and necrosis factor can be activated, the CD8 cells could get which can directly go into apoptosis and there could be autoantibodies that can be produced. All of them will eventually result in beta cell destruction and that will result in absence of insulin.